Yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Yeah, sure. Um, pause it. That's fine. Hi, everybody. How's it going? <laughs> um, sorry. Care to ask me a question before, just as I hit record? Welcome to the world in April of seven nineteen that we totally know one hundred percent about, and uh, is it's gonna be fine and totally accurate. It's it's fine. We're <laughs> battle royaling it. So the Byzantines are here. Good old uh, Byzantines. Umayyad Caliphate. Uh, Tibet's its own independent country. So there you go, Tibet. There's your wet dream. Um, the Tang Dynasty currently rules um, China in the land of Tang, which is just fucking horrifying of a name. Uh, the Shogunate, of course, in Japan. Um, the, these guys, the leader of nobody and nothing. But there are capitals, so they obviously exist um, in some description. It's fine. I don't think they can recruit. No, they can't. So it's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, we're going to see who wins in this uh, ancient fight. The Mayans are all the way over here, fully alone on the continent. Uh, that really sucks for them. Also, um, Atria is there for some reason or another. So that's nice. Bengal. A lot of uh, interesting um, players in India. I'm very curious to see what happens out of that. But let's unpause as everybody is declaring war on one another. Um, most only have like one or two units. So it's pretty even because they start off, you start off with no units just in general. Um, so yeah, like for example, Pomerania is probably not going to survive the Polish invasion that's coming. Um, but we'll start to see bigger wars with uh, units as more common. As you can see, like, the Saxons have three now. Um, you'll see probably the Byzantines start to build an empire. Uh, oh, it was just annexed. Who cares? <laughs> the Baltic people declared war on Poland. Finns declared war on nobody. So they're just going to invade. Oh, I see. They've inv they're invading the nothing here. So there is land that can be invaded, I do believe. Um by certain tribes um, there's really nothing for them to gain they have no factories or blacksmiths or anything so it's literally just land uh, but there is population in it so that's you know one thing um, so you'll see some of them try to expand out into this no man's land uh, fairly quickly the Pictish tribes are at war Duchy of Aquitaine is going to be interesting uh, Duchy of Aquitaine of course had uh, the famous battle at, uh, just outside of Toulouse. Uh, driving back the uh, Islamic uh, empires from Europe. Northumbria declared war on the Scots. Oh, there you go. Saxons declaring war on the Danes. Oof. Swedish Vikings and stuff. Generally, I'd assume they'd be, you know, allies and whatnot. The Danes are invading the Swedish Vikings, but... Game of the Franks to quarter on the Frisians now. Because why not? Yeah, Britain uh, has Northumbria as a power player. A lot of places are going to get annexed very quickly. And because Northumbria looks like they're the only ones that have a unit on the British Isles. So that's pretty major. The Mayans declared war on nobody, so the Mayans are expanding in America. Uh, it looks like the Umayyad Caliphate as well is expanding. Um, into Africa. The Finns are still... Oh, Petty Irish Kingdom took one state. Uh, Scots were annexed. Northumbria still looking to invade London uh, of the Anglo-Saxon Kingdom. So Northumbria is going to be the main, main one there. Bulgaria looks like it's fighting for its life against the Tavarians here. They've got a unit squared away attacking Kiev and then they've got another unit trying to invade from the south that keeps getting surrounded or almost surrounded uh, Pomeranians took seven states wait a minute the Pomeranians are still alive oh my god they are I guess the Poles got taken out the Vikings looking to expand their land even farther north and the Baltic people look like they're trying to do the same thing 
fins are still at war with this this random so you can see these ones attacking and you here could uh, end up being the ones that are actually stronger later on it's totally possible um, like the Turkish cognate which is in an odd spot not exactly Turkish or exactly who I'd expect to be up here but okay Saxons declared war on the Swedish Vikings. Yeah, so they're looking to take Scandinavia. The Thormir just declared war on Wessex. I'm surprised none of these... None of the English kingdoms have managed to pull out any kind of troopage yet. Um, they are training. Oh, no, they're not. For no reason at all. Well, that's their own fault. They don't want to train an army. They're just going to lose it all out. Tang declared war on nothing. Northumbria declared war on Mercia. And Northumbria, with Mercia falling, is going to take England in its entirety. Uh, the Kingdom of the Franks is looking super strong. They took out the Spanish Islamic Caliphate. And uh, Kingdom of the Asturias absolutely just wrecked them there. Uh, oh, the Slavics are declaring war on the Turks, who are not Turkish. It's like the Holy Roman Empire, not Holy, not Roman, and not an empire. They're not Turkish, and they're not a cognate, really. Well, they are kind of a cognate. They are ruled by a cognate, so, yeah, fair enough. Bulgaria declared war on the, on the nothing. Good job, Bulgaria. Oh, I see, they're invading Crimea. I assume that, yeah, Bulgaria declared war on the Khazar Khanate. Um, who just took three states, but they're at war with the Slavic peoples. Uh, oh, never mind. Sorry, that's their western. The Slavic peoples have quite the army already. Um, I imagine the Saxons do as well, fighting north here. The Finns have a somewhat decent-sized army, at the very least. The Vikings don't really. And they're running out of expansion room. The Saxons will probably end up going against... Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> going against the Norse Vikings, because they're weaker than the Finns. And the Finns are going after the... They're headed deeper into northern Russia, which is a smart move. Uh, yep, there goes the Western Turkish. And the Slavics are at war with this little state here. I imagine after that they'll go to war with the other um, empty states to the north here. Um, yeah. It's interesting that they have that. I'm quite, I quite like that. So the, the expansion can actually happen. Also, the Mayans, um, with their what, two units, one unit, they haven't made another unit. Have heavy, apparently heavy rebellions, and not enough manpower for another infantry unit. It's just kind of walking around. Yeah, that was quick. Saxons are looking quite strong. Ooh, the Baltic people are at war with. Saxons now. Now that is not the front line you should be doing anything on. Hey, the Finns took over that one state. Yeah, that's not the front line you should be focusing on against the Saxons at all. That's going to be your undoing there. Baltic states. Also, they're at war with Bulgaria, so <laughs> that's we're just opening up Bulgaria for a front. We we'll have a bigger army. Let's see. The Avar Khanate is at war with the Kingdom of the Franks. The Franks, I think they should be able to flood troops in here. They have a decent sized army and they've been doing really well in Europe. Is Lombardy and the Byzantines at war? Oh, they are. And Lombardy managed to beat them. The Byzantines have managed to raise a decent army. It looks like Lombardy's not doing too bad either. Uh, but I don't think it could stand up to like a, a Frankish invasion. Might not even be able to stand up against a Byzantine invasion in full. Hard to say though. Um, the Umayyad Caliphate, its armies are in Africa. Just taking Africa. Because why not? Uh, oh, Baltic people were annexed. Uh, the Saxons going against the Finns now. 
I love how the Turkish Cognate uh, and the Eastern Slavics are like fighting north as they try to like overtake each other. Tang's got a good uh, amount of land too. They're taking Korea up through Russia. Pretty impressive. It looks like the um, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Something Yang Thanton uh, is dominating most of uh, India as well as far western China. They could be the two powerhouses trying to vie for China. Although China itself has a pretty decent army. India is still anybody's game. Um, this here group seems to be doing quite well. They look like they could be a contender for it, but they'll probably get taken out by the Thanton or even the Umyad Caliphate. How's Japan? They've done nothing. I love it. Good job, Japan. Just keep that in fighting. It's fine. They're also not training any basic divisions. They have a shit ton of manpower, but are training no divisions. <laughs> nothing. Uh, the Franks have a good amount of manpower too, but the Turkish Khan... Oh, no, it wasn't the Turkish Khanate. Who was it that just had like 13 million manpower? China has 10. Who the hell did I click on that had like 13 million manpower? Somebody had a bunch of manpower. Maybe I'm going crazy though. Doesn't matter. Uh, the Franks still fighting pretty hardcore against the Khanate here. So we've got actually two like decent sized militaries going head to head. It looks like if the Franks, though, can manage to cut them off here, that'll kill a, enough of their army that might be able to turn the tide here. Or if somebody like to say the Saxons declare war on them, then they'd be really screwed up. Or the Byzantines. Could also happen. How did this little thing survive this long? With all of these tribes around it. The Finns haven't been taken out yet, and that's impressive. They've held out quite well, though they're going to lose their capital and stuff, and probably the war. Ooh, and the Slavics just declared war on them too, so that's not good. Good while you lasted. Yep, so this looks like the dominant Indian tribe, Indian kingdom. But I don't I don't know if they'll be able to take on the Phanton here. Oh, and Bulgaria is now going to get sandwiched between two big players here. Again, the Umayyad Caliphate just keeps expanding its lands into Africa farther and farther. They haven't declared war on Ghana, but I think that's because Africa is its own thing. I'm not entirely sure where its capital is, but they've, they're not even close to capitulation, so really, it doesn't exactly matter. Somebody eventually will declare war on them, though. Wow, that's a front line I've ever saw one. The Bulgarians are trying. You've got to give them credit. They're going to try to hold out, They just, but they don't have the army for it. It's just not going to work. The Franks broke a line in the Avar Khanate, surrounded a unit here. Two units, and they took them out. I love how, I love how they're shooting the spears. <laughs> they obviously haven't, like, finished it. Like finish the animation and finish the troop style, but they've got giant like spears and they're shooting them. <laughs> they're shooting them on the front. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Oh man, the French though look like they're about to surround this army here in the south. So cutting off their forces from the north. Oh, and that's it. The Avarconi's going down now. The Saxons just declared war on them. There's no way they're going to be able to survive that. Two big juggernauts coming on on them? No, not gonna not gonna live that one. You can see the Franks have already broken like most of the line. 
They'll probably still uh, defend well down here just because they're cut off from flooding out. Uh, Tank declared war on. Oh, the last, last bastion here. Ooh, Kusharatsa at war. Soon these two will be at war. I'm surprised the Byzantines haven't expanded more or tried to. Like, they could declare war on Bulgaria at this point. Oh, they lost Podorotica. Podgorica. And, yeah, they got annexed completely. Franks are at war with what's left of Bulgaria. I wonder if the Franks will go to war with Lombardy. Yep. Sakins so declared war on the Eastern Slavics. Interesting. So we've got Saxon against the Slavics. Which will be a big war. Two big armies clashing here. Large front there. And then you've got Lombardy and the Franks. Lombardy's got a decent army and it's got a decent defensive position with the mountains. But if they lose that, then it's pretty much all over. So like if the Franks manage to reach like Milan uh, and Genoa, they're pretty much done for. They really just have to defend until like Saxon declares war on the Franks though. If they can manage to do that, they'll be okay. And it all depends on what the Franks can do. Eh. Tang declared war on who? Oh, Champa. Oh, okay. Who's the Turkish Khanate at war with? Itself? Who are they at war with? Oh. A nobody tribe. Just like the Umiads. At least the Umiad Caliphate's almost taken all of Africa. So they'll probably declare war on like Atria and Ghana. Ooh, Lombardy's losing some ground here, north of Venice. All it takes is one spot of that line to collapse, and then it just all falls apart. So if they can't push that back, or if France can push farther in, oh, they just took another spot. If they can take Venice, that'd be, that wouldn't be good. This is a pretty even conflict. Hard to say who's winning that one. Bulgaria is still alive. They have Kiev. They're fighting the Slavics still in Crimea as well. They're actually pushing them back a little bit. But I think they'll lose once Kiev falls. Oh yeah. Yeah, if Kiev goes, they're done. Champa got annexed. Yep, saw that coming. Oh, Tang declared war on the Turks. Okay. That'll be a deadly war. The Turks have a decent sized army, though Tang has a very large one, and it's everywhere, so. It looks like the Eastern Slavics are starting to cave under the Saxon pressure, at least on the European line here. This northern line, it's a little, a little more even. Um, but it looks like the Saxons did take Leningrad. So that's not good. How's it going on here? The uh, French still haven't been able to take Venice, but they haven't lost it either. And there we go. Umiad Caliphate finally annexes that African thing. Declares war on Ghana. Won't be a long war. Oh, they declared war on Atreya too, I just didn't even notice. It was so quick and just, foosh, gone. I wonder if they'll declare war on the Byzantines. That'd be an interesting war. Probably not. They'll probably declare war on the Thanton. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thanton's weaker than the Byzantines. I can see the Byzantines taking advantage of a weaker Eastern Slavic if they start to really crumble. 
I'm surprised at the Byzantines, though. They haven't really done much. Um, they're war with Lombardy. Could see them maybe try to naval invade. I don't know if they can. Oh, they have convoys. I guess it's possible. They could ferry over land in Taranto or something. I don't know. Lombardy still hasn't fully collapsed, though. They almost did here by Venice, but they're holding out at Venice. Barely. Barely holding out. But they are holding out. They're also not doing super hot up here. Which, again, is bad. It's one of their m more mountainy regions. This is where they have the upper hand. I think the French have also taken the mountaintops around here as well. Because I don't remember Turin being that close to the front. I remember being at least a, at least a tile away. Bulgaria is still in it, though. I just, I love that. I love how they're holding out in Kiev somehow. Somehow they're doing good enough to hold out against all of that. That's just insane. The Slavs are getting pushed back now, too, uh, out of the Crimea front. So the Saxons are now taking over that one. You'll see these Bulgarians eventually fall. They can't hold out forever. And it looks like that might come true sooner than later. We got one unit defending Kiev and it's all oh, there it goes. And there it goes. Oh wow. Sad day. Yeah, Eastern Slavic people are definitely losing out now. They are getting pushed back really bad. Uh, the Turks are too, by a good amount. Uh, the Umiads look like they just got their army to that front line, so that that could change the tide of war for uh, Sirhata. Uh, they still haven't taken that. Looks like they did take in here a little bit, though. Still fighting over turn and whatnot. They're still very much losing this fight, though. They're, like, coming in and out of winning it a little bit, but it's very gradual. The French are winning battles, too, like in Venice. Winning it here as well. They could envelop Venice. Wouldn't do them all that much good. Venice is a port, so the troops in it would be supplied. What's Maya doing? <laughs> do they have a second unit yet? They don't even have the one unit. Where did their one guy go? They're not recruiting anything. They could, though. They have the manpower. Where did their one unit go? It's just gone? Disappeared into the, into the moon? What? Oh, I don't know what that means. Oh, okay. Ah, I don't speak French. Speaking of the French, though, they punctured in here, south of Turin. They could possibly surround some units. I don't think they will. I think they'll push the line first. In fact, they definitely will, looking at that, that, that number. It's not a healthy unit uh, defending there. Oh shit, they just punctured in there, too, in the north. They're starting to surround Turin. Yep, they just took that. Good. You want the French to win, do you? Oh. Who do you want to win? Uh, I don't really know who I want to win. Serbia's not in this. Uh, it's currently owned by the French. I'd love to see Byzantine, Byzantine win it, but... Luxembourg's also part of the French. King of the Franks. 
I'd like to see the Byzantines win it, but I know they won't, because they've just sat there doing nothing the whole time. <laughs> they have an okay sized army, but I don't think it's big enough. What? Yeah. I don't think Luxembourg would win any war against anybody. You're gonna play Supreme Ruler as Luxembourg? Good luck. As Luxembourg. Good fucking luck. Okay, good luck. Take over the world. Okay. I'll take over. I will take over. The United States. You'll take over the United States as Luxembourg. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll hold you to that. Okay. I don't know how yet. But I'll figure it out. Oh, God. Extra research slot. Can we go to Luxembourg one day? Yes, we can totally go to Luxembourg one day. I'd like to go back to Europe, so... Savazavad declared war on Kaling. Wait, what? Who? Who declared war on fucking who? Oh. This guy declared war on this guy. I see. Which must mean that he has a unit. Oh, he does, and he's going to invade. And even Slavic people were annexed. The Saxon is declaring war on this province. Good for the Saxons. Give them a little break. I guess. Looks like France is starting to pincer her in a little bit here. They're fighting in Genoa. Although Genoa's well defended. Turin is not anymore, apparently. It's not looking as good. They're starting to lose the mountaintop, and that, that's not good. They fully lose these mountains. Generally, that's when you see it, Italy collapse in on itself. I haven't seen them come back before. It does happen, but it's rare. Very, very rare. What are the Byzantines doing? Dimiad's um, still invading the Phanton. The Phanton's only alive because it took over land down here. Imagine the Dimiad's will go after uh, Sir Hada after. Oh yeah, the Tang's still worth the Turks. The Turks are still trying their damnedest to hold out. They have no army left. They have, what, four units? Yeah, four total units. It's not going to last. It looks like the Saxons are interested possibly in um, the Franks. They've made a front and troops going into it. If they do, that could totally turn the tide of war here. This Lombardy is very slowly losing. I imagine they have less. Yeah, 2.19 mil casualties versus 472. So, yeah, Lombardy on the defense is definitely taking less casualties. I'd love to see them try to make a push. I don't know how well it would go. Ooh. Turin is not looking healthy there. Oh, that's, that's an attack. Sorry, I thought they were defending Turin, but they're actually trying to push. Celebrate the royal family. Yes, celebrate the royal family. As war rages around them. Celebrate the fact that they exist. Pretty hard fighting in there, so I assume Tang is at war with this. Yeah, I see them moving in on it. Who are you playing against? Nobody. What do you mean you're not playing as anybody? I'm observing. It's a battle royale. It's fight to the death. Who wins? Sure you have. <laughs> Carried them claiming she's watched all my videos. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. I usually hear from your community. Uh-huh. I don't see a point of watching. 
It's fair. Oh, they have toad catapults now. Who's that? Oh, the Saxons. Whether they put that to use, who knows? What are they currently making? Oh, Jesus, a bunch of infantry. A bunch of infantry, good. Um, great. Good for them. The French are starting to run out of manpower, but so is Lombardy, so really. Doesn't change anything in the war. Oh, well, the Franks have improved archers and stuff now, though. Could help them. Tang quid war on... Oh, Tang is now at war with the weakened Phanton. So that's another enemy for them to fight. So they're... Yeah, they're just dead. Saxons to quid war on the Umiad Caliphate. Wait, what? Really? They're more powerful than them? I mean, cool. I'm glad they are, but I didn't expect that. Very interesting. The Umiad Caliphate has all of Africa right now, too, so they're not going to surrender quickly, I wouldn't imagine. Especially because you can't go through here. You've got to go all the way around. Can't go through that no man's land. Lombardy line still holding. So it looks like the Saxons... Uh, Making uh, plans on the Franks was was a bluff, I guess. As they go to war with the Umiads. It's interesting because that means that the uh, Byzantines are stronger than them. Which is funny because the Byzantines haven't done anything. They've just sat there this whole fucking time. <laughs> and the Byzantines have more factories than the Umiads too. And the Umiads have all of Africa. They have the whole damn continent. Uh, but they haven't built any more factories. It was basically useless land. No, do not dye my hair. Absolutely not. Cruiser effort. Oh yeah. Lots of lots of battle cruisers floating around in seven twenty three uh, AD. Definitely. Tons of them. The Bismarck set sail this year. <laughs> Tang declared war on Serhada, saw that coming. The Umiads obviously won't because they're at war with the Saxons. Probably Tang gonna go against the Umiads after they can't reach Serhada anymore. I would imagine, because the Saxons do look like they're... At least they were pushing them down. The Umiads now are, you know, concentrating their full military on the Saxon line. I don't, I don't think they're super worried about it. Oh! The Lombardy, yes, you have a lot of hair. Lombardy actually took a province back. Good for them. Uh, a couple of provinces, too, because they were right up to Genoa. And so they've, they've made a little pushback. Good for them. Just going to drag out that war longer. <laughs> That's all it's going to do, guys. Just just give up. It's fine. Yep, saw that coming. Tang declaring war on the Umiads. Uh, so Saxon might not get a good bite of the Caliphate if it's not careful. If it can't do a quick push and take uh, to the Persian Gulf, um, Tang's going to just sweep through it. And, won't, and then they won't be able to do anything about it. 
but it looks like Omiad's scared, more scared of Tang as they put all their troops on that front, which is also really dumb because if Saxon cuts them off on the Persian Gulf, they've got nothing defending behind them, right, at all. And, and everything's squished between the Saxons and Tang. It's just a terrible military strategy to throw all, your, all of your army on one enemy when you have two of them. Uh, oh, good, okay, the French took back that province. They haven't taken that province, so they took um, west of Genoa, though. And they haven't been able to push anywhere else. So it's starting to be very costly for them. And the defense is successful all around right now. So that's not good. The Saxons, mm, they got a good push there when the... Omniads took their stupid army off of their front. Um, whether they'll get enough of a push. Again, they have to get to that Persian Gulf. If they can't get to that Persian Gulf, I, I have a feeling Tang is going to be able to sweep in there. Although Tang has met up with Syriata now. So there's fighting on that border. That'll slow Tang down a little bit. Not a whole lot, but enough. It could be enough. But even still, the Umiads, most of their army is on that side. If, say, like this Saxon unit pushes down to the Persian Gulf here, most of their army is now captured in, uh, in India. Northern India and Nepal. Which is not good, because they, they can't defend their homeland very well against the full Saxon army. Oh, the French actually made a push again. They've surrounded Turin. Um, can they take Turin? There is ten units in there, and they're going to be... Oh, they haven't fully surrounded it. They're still getting supply in there. And now they're fighting pretty hard for Venice at this point, too. They could take it if the... Italians don't put fresh troops in there quick enough. They're still supplying troops in there, but they're not very good. Not good enough. Oh, never mind. There they go. They managed to do it. If they keep that up, though, eventually they're going to lose it. Oh, Turin just fell. Oh, shit. That uh, whole line there is starting to collapse a little bit. Oh. They almost lost that province. The French almost pushed into it. I'm going to make the French pay for it now, but the French are probably still going to get it. Crazy. The Lombards are still holding pretty well in the north, though. The mountains, again, good defensible terrain. It's losing that mountains, and they're close to doing that in here, in turn and stuff. They're on their kind of last lines of defense here. Oh, they're about to lose that province there. The French are going to take that. They keep trying to replace... Oh, there they go. Okay. I was like, really? Really? Like, really? You're going to manage to replace that again? The French are starting to actually see some gains here. Um, the Umiad Caliphate is actually doing really well on the defense uh, against two major powers. Although the um, Tang are going to come up from their south here soon, which isn't good. Because if they can squish that in there, then the Saxons will be able to concentrate more on this lane. If the Saxons can concentrate on that line, they'll be able to push them out. But honestly, decent job from the Umiads there. Also, Byzantine gets involved. That's a possibility. Because the Franks probably... I don't know. It depends on what the Franks do. If the Franks beat Lombardy quick enough, um, it really depends on what the Franks do. But I don't know if they're going to do it quick enough. They pushed pretty well on this side. Turin is theirs very fairly securely. But they haven't pushed through the defense line enough. 
They need to take, like, Venice and then come down into the plane, surround through. I don't know if they'll be able to do that right away. Sir so is dead. They're definitely done. They are not going to last. <laughs> they didn't have the troops anyway. They weren't going to last anyway. Yeah, and there it goes. And now Tang's army's going to come up from the south, which is unguarded, and they're going to squish the Umiyad army in there, and it's going to kill most of them. And then that's just going to be the open open door for, like, Saxon. Oh, they got the catapult upgrade finally. Good for them. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're going to squish in here. Tang and Saxon are about to meet and close in that army. Oh, yeah, it's going to push them back a little bit, though. They're not going to go down without a fight. Oh, they just had a bunch surrounded. That's not good. So what Tang really needs to do is surround, surround them in here. That'll wipe out most of their army, and then it's just an easy sweep. Any more gains by anybody? Doesn't look like it. That might have been. I'm not too sure. I think it's not as heavy around Venice right now. Looks like both sides aren't really fighting for it. Ooh! A push into Milan there. They're trying to push them back out. They are not doing super well on that. Now, if the French were smart, they'd use both of these provinces and push on this one. Try to squish them. Take Genoa, maybe surround some troops. I mean, Milan's their capital. They lose Milan, there's going to be a big morale drop. Their soldiers won't fight as well. But also taking Milan's difficult. Very difficult. Well, they're not doing well fighting on that one. Are they going to lose that province? No. No, I think they've replenished it in time. There's a lot of these close calls, and I think that's why they're losing. See, like the Bolzano there was a close call, but they just managed to reinforce it. Ooh, yeah. With Tang's help, there's still troops in here. Quite a big amount of the army, but it's taking major attrition now. They're not going to go anywhere. Saxon started to push here too. Saxon can manage to consolidate that, take this province here, surround the rest of their army in here. Then they've also got their own way to the Persian Gulf. So they'll be able to take more of the Caliphate when it does fall. But it doesn't look like they're going to do that. <laughs> they're not really pushing there. They're pushing um, close to where Tang is. Trying to take out that area, which isn't just not going to work out because they're just going to retreat back and backtrack, although they did just surround some more units there. And they're going to lose a significant portion of their army in here. See, the Saxons need to take out these guys in here and send these units to that front. And Tang's doing that for them. Yeah, there we go. Fighting for Kabul. And they're losing horribly as they all just deplete and die. That was a huge casualty spike. Uh, 1.32 million men are dead in the Umiyads. That's a lot of men. 
a lot to lose. So we essentially got the two big wars, which is Tang and the Saxons versus the Umayyad Caliphate, what's left of them, um, and the Franks versus Lombardy. We've come down to that point now. The Mayans are making a mess, just a fucking mess of America with their two units. Just a friggin' mess. Oh my god. Wow. They should just chase after capitals, really. That's what they should do. Just chase after capitals. They can become super powerful too. Look how much look how many friggin' look at this. Look how many factories are there. They're not deploying any units. Can you imagine if they actually tried to deploy an army? Ooh, they'd be more powerful than the Saxons, the Tang, the Franks, the Umiads. The Umiads have a bunch of factories now. Oh no, they don't, never mind. It's not not them. <laughs> I was like, oh wow, they actually built factories, but no, they didn't. I think they've gone down a few. Which is just sad. They're holding a good front now. Now that they've got a more straight, straight edge front line, they seem to be holding a little better. Although the Saxons aren't launching any kind of offensive right now, it's just the Tang. Only the Tang. And the Tang have a humongous amount of men sitting in here. That are just doing shit all. It looks like they've consolidated... The Franks have consolidated this gain and have taken north of the river. So they're basically along the river, river line here. Just trying to take across that. They're succeeding in a few points now. Milan's going to be hard to take because it's a capital. They're going to defend that one to the death. Like, absolute death. But I mean, the French are fighting for it. They're giving them the good run for their money. That's seven units on that province. Oh! Lombards are pushing out. A lot. What the hell happened there? The Franks just kind of collapsed on that line. I guess they have here, too. Like, that they've taken more land. They managed to take south of Zurich, though. But yeah, no, the Franks lost all this land around Venice that they had before. That's crazy. It's just a very long war. The Umiad Caliphate looks like the Saxons are pressing in advance, or at least trying to. Um, the Tang are also advancing quite easily. That's the problem. The Saxons are actually struggling quite a lot, but the Tang are not. Uh, which is kind of bad. At least bad for the Saxons. It's interesting, too, because the Saxons have 415 factories. Um, 200 of those military, or blacksmiths. Um, whereas the Tang... Is this the Tang? This is the Tang. They only have 268. 129 of them are military. The Saxons should be the ones absolutely steamrolling here. Not the Tang. Um, same with the Franks. 412 factories. 177 on... Well, that's the Byzantines. 81? They should be steamrolling them. I mean, the defensive positions, I expected them to hold for a little bit. Did they just retake Turin? Oh, they did, too. Holy crap. Lombardy's just not going down. They keep pushing back the Franks' gains. It's getting a little embarrassing for the Franks at this point. Yeah, they pushed north. They're almost to Innsbruck. I mean, honestly, if they can get down into the valleys of, like, Munich and stuff, they might be able to actually push the Franks back even more. That's crazy. Wow. However, I think these wars are going to go on for a while, so I'm going to just give it a brief pause, and we'll come back when something interesting does happen. 
So, uh, interesting things have happened. Uh, Lombardy pushed heavily uh, towards the Balkans and have actually taken like Tristy and stuff like that again um, and pushed the French pretty heavily back. However, um, the French in the West decided to take that opportunity and push hard on them and took their capital at Milan and pushed them back down to Naples um, and took all of that high ground and stuff south of Zurich. So... While the Lombardy made gains, they also just lost a whole bunch of stuff, and they could get cut off at Venice here uh, from the main, you know, Italianness that is Italy, um, the boot itself. And if they do, most of their army is not there; it's up in here, um, so they could get pushed down the uh, the peninsula pretty quickly by French forces, um, or not. That they could pull back entirely and try to def make a defensive line north of Florence in like Bologna or something. I don't know. Um, they're getting pushed back a little bit here, as you can see. Like, they had here and, and this city here that I'm not going to try and pronounce. Uh, but they've been pushed back into, like, into the city of Tristy itself. Um, Tristy. It's a port city. Um, and it looks like, yeah, they just got surrounded fully, so they're going to start pulling their troops out of there and not reinforcing it fully. Um, they just surrounded five divisions. Uh, the French did. Uh, up here in the north, which is quite bad. That's pretty significant to somebody with only 54 uh, factories total, 16 only uh, military. The Umiads have still put up a pretty strong defense, though the Saxons have broken into the Arabian Peninsula a little bit. There's no major offensives going on right now, but uh, the Saxons put one on that pushed them back pretty far and managed to cut uh, Tang's um, advance off uh, from the Umiads. So that's good for the Saxons. Although, I can see the possibility of the Franks attacking the Saxons after the War of Lombardy. Uh, just because the Saxons aren't super effective for being a really strong, supposedly. On, on paper, the Saxons are, should be like ridiculously overpowered, but um, they just don't seem to have it in them. I don't really know what's going on there, but hey, whatever. Um, ooh, Lombardy! A bunch of its troops just got surrounded uh, and wiped out. That's probably going to up their... Yeah, 3 million dead, um, which is quite a lot. The Franks have 8.2 million, which is a lot. So, yeah, but they have about that to spare. So, and they've now wiped out most of the main parts of the Lombardy army. Um, like I said, once that uh, mountainous region falls, that's usually about it. And it finally did, and it finally caved in enough for the French to really get in there. Um... So yeah, I don't think Lombardy has a chance in hell of winning anymore uh, against the French. It's probably still going to take the French a little while to get down and beat them fully, uh, just because, as you can see here, there are still some pretty impressive numbers on this front, but the French are definitely going to outdo them at this point, and uh, the more factories they lose, uh, the less they're going to be able to resupply the troops, um, as well as their manpower is lower. Though they do have manpower, it's just lower. Um, yeah, it's just not good. So, yeah. <laughs> Sucks to be Lombardy right about now. They thought they might be able to come back, and they just barely can't. And you, you can see, like, on this uh, western side. Achoo! Excuse me. Goodness. Thank you. Um, yeah, on this uh, western side, uh, they're pushing pretty pretty heavily. The French are, are, are just shoving their way down there, trying to take uh, as many cities as they can, as quickly as they can. Because the more they take, the less Lombardy has to defend with. Still no major offensive on the uh, Cal Umiad Caliphate by the Saxons. So that's disappointing. I was hoping they'd try to push all the way to the Mediterranean, but apparently that's not their goal yet. I guess they're waiting to see what happens now that Lombardy's starting to collapse. Oh yeah, it won't be long. They're taking Bologna. They're fighting for Florence. They've pushed right down the coast. They're not far out of Rome now. I'm surprised Naples was chosen as the capital, not Rome. I figured Rome would be first and then Naples. And then it's usually uh, Palermo. Apparently not. Ooh, they are fighting right outside of Rome now. They just took Rome. Lombardy is just in full route retreat now. It looks like they were trying to like defend the, the mountains, but they might not even be able to do that. Um, the Franks might surround the rest of their army before they can defend Naples. 
They might surround them in Imkana. Then they're going to have to go to, what, Taranto? If they have a port they can get out of? Oh yeah, they just overran them. Oh, and they've surrounded them without a port. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Something like 500,000 men. Naples is being fought for. Naples is lost. And that's it. Oh, the Byzantines declared war on the Umeads, and so did the Franks, I do believe. So that's just bad. Now they've got the might of the Byzantine Empire coming down upon them, as they're already weakened. And the Saxons look like they're launching their offensive, now that the Byzantines are involved. That's probably what the Saxons were waiting for, was that war to resolve. They knew the Byzantines would come and, and fight. So that's good. The Byzantines are absolutely demolishing them. Byzantines also got their land back in Italy, so good for them. Good job, Byzantine Empire. You got your shit back. And they're just squishing what's left of the Umiad Caliphate's army. They could surround the entire army, what's left of it. That's a possibility. There's a few, you know, units in Africa and stuff, but there's definitely nothing that would hold up any kind of defense uh, if they managed to surround and, and destroy this army in here. The Saxons have already surrounded some troops in there. Oof. Rough. Just rough. I thought the Umiya Caliphate would do way better. I thought they'd do way better, but they made the mistake of going into Africa. And that's what screwed them up. Yep, they've cut off their main armies now from Africa. And the Byzantines are just blitzing through. They're crushing what's left of the Caliphate's resistance in uh, the Levant and the Mesopotamian region. That's gotta hurt though, that's gotta be some major casualties. Yeah, 180 some thousand from the Byzantines alone. That's a lot. So quickly. And the Byzantines are just flooding into Africa, like just going ham. The Umeads won't survive all of Africa's invasion. I think the Byzantines will get somewhere around Morocco. Especially as the Arabian Peninsula falls. And yeah, they've got like, what, four divisions in, in Arabia? Um, they're desperately sending like two or three divisions to try and defend it, like Benghazi and stuff. It's just not going to work. Byzantines just flooded that. They're all fresh, I guess, too, right? I mean, they've got fresh units. They haven't really fought. So they're all fresh, fully equipped, ready to go. Like, of course it was going to be a bloodbath. Just insane. Even the Saxons aren't even really trying to take anything now. They're just kind of like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I wonder what's how, how the uh, breakup's going to look here. Because the Byzantines have... Yeah, well, 100% of that war. But, of course, you know, this war here. Uh, the Saxons at 54%. Byzantines only 14 So that's going to be an interesting land grab. I wonder what the Byzantines will get. If the Byzantines will smart. They'll get the valuable land, like, you know, in the Levant here. Damascus and Jerusalem and whatnot. Saxons declared war on the Kingdom of the Franks. Oh, shit, okay. Uh, let's see if the F Saxons are better than the Franks at warfare. The Saxons were pretty lazy against the Caliphate, but maybe they'll be better against the Franks. The Franks were also took them forever to take Lombardy, so who knows. And if they get cut off easy enough um, from their Balkan armies, that could be a big blow, too. They can't reinforce each other. Um, they can currently get through, but barely. Um, you can see some gains on both sides so once in a while. It looks like the Saxons, though, are overcoming the Franks. Very slowly, they are taking land. I'd be pretty scared if I was the Byzantines. <laughs> Byzantines, though, are just happily blitzing through Africa. As the Caliphates, yeah, they'll they'll probably lose once their capital falls at Tunis. I don't think they'll be able to survive it. Byzantines are just, like, not even committing a, their full army anymore. They're just kind of like, eh, yeah, whatever. Just 
throw whatever you've got. Oh, and that's it, though. Caliphate is gone. Tang declared war with the Byzantines. That's not good. Um, a lot of the Byzantines' armor is sitting in Africa. Well, the Saxons took quite a bit of land. But yeah, Tang declared war on the Byzantines. They don't have a border, though. The only border they have is what Tang took in Egypt. And Tang doesn't have any... Well, they have one troop, apparently, uh, situated there. So that's good, at least. wonder what the Byzantine Empire will do. Will they declare war on the Franks? Probably. The Franks are losing pretty decisively this war with the Saxons. So if they take all this Egypt land, if they just don't sit there and do nothing again, they'll probably go to war with this, the Franks. Try to take some of that... Oh, sweet, sweet Balkan land, or the rest of Italy. Because why not try to gain some Italy? Byzantine Empire is looking pretty healthy, though, gotta say. I'm scared, because I know it's not going to last. Because I know that the other two are, are bigger and, and more bulky and more powerful. Saxons and Tang. I know it's going to be them two in the end. It's just the Byzantines, they've lasted. Just like in real life, they've lasted a long time. Uh, yep, there they go. They took the Tang land there. They're going to take what they can in the Balkans. Try to consolidate something in Italy. Take uh, attention away from the front line with the Saxons for as long as they can. To get as much as they can. Although they've got... Oh, they have some troops in there. Yeah, there they go. They started to lay into them. And the Franks have two ports? Three ports. They could retreat out from. So... Depends if they lose those ports. Will depend on the fate of all of those men. And the Byzantines, they're going to get sandwiched, I think, in here. Uh, but the, if they can supply more troops into Taranto, they might be able to take out and actually secure the Italian peninsula for a little bit. Retake Rome. Be Roman again. The French really don't have much of a push. They have some troops in here. Um, it all depends on whether they're good enough to take out this core or not. Um, they're also evacuating some troops from the Balkans into there, I think, to try and consolidate Italy as best they can. As the Byzantines now rush in, the Saxons are absolutely demolishing them. I thought that war, I thought this war would would be better. Um, <laughs> like I figured that Franks would have actually defended better um, than this, but no, they're they're losing very decisively, very decisively. Forty two percent. They keep just losing. Tons of land. All their major cities. Where have they retreated to? Toulouse. Yeah, the last of their Balkan troops here getting smushed. Oh, rough. And the Byzantines did consolidate Italy. They managed to take out the troops there. They're just fighting in Anzio now. And then they can. They have a good front um, in the north. They're not getting taken out like they did with Lombardy. Lombardy just wiped them out pretty quick before they could reinforce it, so. Once the Franks fall, the Saxons will probably declare war on the Byzantines, unfortunately, and then it'll be the Tangs versus the Saxons. Unless Byzantine pulls a rabbit out of their ass and somehow beats the Saxons, but I just can't see it. They just don't have the troop numbers for that. Who's the emperor right now? Leo the Third. Yeah, they don't even have like a great, you know, really good emperor. Who's leading the Saxons? Mundu kind. Okay. He's got a cool name. Who's leading the Franks? Charles Martel. Okay. Who's lead who's leading Tang again? Some dude. <laughs> Doesn't even have his real name, just Emperor. Well, the Franks are on their last yeah. Uh, Madrid is probably their last capital. Um, yeah, definitely their last guy. Oh, there they go. Byzantines took a good chunk of Italy. Good for them. Good for them. Byzantines, yeah, they're worth 
Dang. Hey, Siri. Who are the Saxons go? Okay. Hey, Siri. Interesting. Set timer for 25 minutes. So the Saxons are going to invade Africa now. They're gonna they're gonna do that. They're gonna do what the Caliphate did. Invade all of that for no real reason. <laughs> Shouldn't take them too long to do that. So the Byzantines can't reach Tang. The Saxons aren't at war with Tang or the Byzantines. They're expanding in Africa. Oh my god. Oh no. Again, shouldn't take them that long. They've got, you know, enough troops. Send troops down into there. What the hell was that? Nothing. Oh okay. my gosh, just my back and oh. all my bones cracking. Oh, fun. How do oh. I look? You look great. Well, until the Saxons take Africa, I'm going to pause it, because it's just going to be a really boring scramble of their troops in Africa until they take it all and then declare war on probably the Byzantines. So, we'll be back. And there's what I was waiting for, the Byzantines and the Saxons at war on every front imaginable. There's Northern Africa, there's Arabia and the Levant, there's uh, the north of the Caucasus Mountains, there's Italy, there's the Balkans, you name it, there's a front. Um, it's looking like the Saxons are getting the upper hand on basically every front. Um, I don't think the Byzantines are going to have enough oomph to push them back. They've got 202, 200 factories, the Saxons have over a thousand at this point, so... It's just not on the cards for the Byzantines. Unless they somehow manage to like quickly sweep them out of Europe and take most of their factories, which just isn't going to happen. Um, not with the size of both of their armies. It'll probably be a longer fight, I would imagine. The Byzantines are definitely not going to go down quietly, uh, as you can see by all the fighting <laughs> happening. Um, but I don't think the Byzantines are going to be able to win it. Uh, the big threat, of course, is the Balkan line, uh, with Constantinople being right fucking there. And uh, they're already pushing down towards it. Hopefully they just abandon Greece, move that army on a defensive line at Constantinople, or just even in southern Thrace, uh, just to hold it. Um, they could even pull out of Italy, honestly. Just let Italy fall um, and pull that defense into Anatolia. That would be more important. Um, though they are holding quite well in, uh, in Italy. I figured they would have collapsed faster than that. You can see they are starting to, to cave in on each other a little bit. Um, there are the odd time, though, I can see the Byzantines taking something. So they aren't, you know, fully screwed. <laughs> uh, these guys are. They're pretty much surrounded at Kerch, which is quite bad. I would get those troops out of there, ship them back. Uh, the Northern Caucasus line looks like it just collapsed in on itself. They just lost... From Rostov all the way down to Stravopol, which is quite a ways, very quickly. Uh, the Levant line seems to be holding quite well. They haven't, there hasn't been any big punch-ins there. The Saxons seem to be really fucking terrible at fighting in the Levant. Uh, whether it's against the Umayyads or the Byzantines, they just can't seem to do anything in the Levant. <laughs> which is sad. They're doing okay in Northern Africa. Um, Byzantines are being pushed back here pretty bad. Ooh, they just had four, four units surrounded, so that's unfortunate. Oh, they just reunited them. That's good. I thought that was going to be it. Um, looks like the Byzantines are also consolidating a defense quite well in um, on that Balkan line. I guess they have hit northern Greece, which is very mountainous, so they have a better defensive position um, there. Uh, it looks like the Italian force that was trying to collapse, they've lost the mountains, and the high ground there is gone. And there is a stupid amount of Saxon troops there. Stupid amount of them. What the hell was that? Hi, sorry. <laughs> she just played something. I don't even know what the hell it was. But yeah, they're taking like Bologna. They're fighting a lot of their forces. They could get surrounded in there, which is which would be very very bad. That's a pretty large force to get surrounded and killed um, in Italy. But hopefully that's not what happens. 
Uh, again, Levant's holding quite well. It looks like the Caucasus, they took quite a bit, but it's semi-holding again in Stravopol area, although the north bubble here is starting to kind of squish, so that might not be good at all. Uh, oh, shoot. They've actually broken through and are fighting uh, in Constantinople now, which is bad. They've cut off the Balkans entirely from... Constantinople and Anatolia, so the main lands of Byzantine-ness um, have been fully cut off, which sucks. I was really hoping the Byzantines would win, but they didn't do anything for so long, so just because they were at war with Lombardy and they just refused to go to war with anybody else, so they just kind of sat there, uh, which is a shame because that would have been, been nice for them to win, so a little bit of retribution there. But hey, it is what it is. They're still doing better at defending the Italian peninsula than Lombardy did. They did a worse job of defending up in the mountains, but I don't think they had the same positioning that Lombardy did either. But they're doing better at defending Italian, the Italian peninsula, which is good. They've reunited the troops in Greece with Anatolia as they took a tile south of Burgas here. Oh, they just retook Burgas itself and surrounded a couple of Saxon units, so that's good. Again, the Levant. Not Saxon strong point. They're not good at pushing in the Levant. Uh, the Caucasus line, like I said, kind of stabilized, though in the east here they have this uh, line right up against this Caspian uh, heading towards Baku. It looks like the Byzantines are actually on it, though. They're trying to stabilize the line. Ooh, Italy. Oh, God. Uh, some troops still fighting. The Spiza. The rest of them have all retreated south of Florence. I wonder how much of a defense they'll put into all of Italy if they'll abandon it after Naples falls. Uh, oh, they made trying to make a breakout in La Spezza. They took the tile directly to the northeast. It's not going to work, but it's a distraction at least. Yeah, so the Byzantines totally retook that side. They're actually pushing um, in the Caucasus. They pushed north. They're well north of Stravopol now. They're headed towards Rostov. So that's positive. Also in Constantinople, they've retaken... Um, southern thrace although they are losing pretty heavily um in ionia which is not good they're also being pushed down near thessaloniki yeah that line's starting to collapse now which is a shame again the levant i think the byzantines have actually pushed um <laughs> i think they've pushed into arabia uh, they've held fairly well in Africa, although that wasn't really a line that anybody should be super concerned about until it gets into um, southern uh, Jordan area. They're holding better than I thought they would. Uh, Italy is basically collapsed. They've got, what, four units here surrounded? They're they're dead. Um, well, Spezza did fall. Well, they've got more troops surrounded there. Yeah, Italy's just a, a lost cause. If I were them, I'd just get out of there. Get down into Taranto and leave. <laughs> Try to defend the the Greek line a little longer. Uh, oh, they got so close to Rostov and stuff. They did really well pushing back, but they're now getting pushed back again. They're close to Stravopol again. The Levant, they're still pushing out by the looks of it. They're losing on every other front, but they're they're actually winning on the Levant front. Saxony just can't... The, the Saxons cannot fight in the Levant at all. They just cannot do it. They're terrible at it. They're risking a cutoff here. They still haven't managed to retake Burgas, though. Um, it looks like they, uh, yeah, the Byzantines have fought back and taken back some land in Ionia. They're in southern Albania now. 
The caucus front is seems to stabilized, so they're not nobody's really taking anything. The tangs are just watching this, like <laughs> what's gonna happen next? Um, the Saxons don't really have a lot of troops on that border. Byzantines, what have they lost? Three point, almost four million. Saxons, two point five. So they're, you know, not super close, but they've both lost a shit ton of men. They both still have. Oh, Saxon actually has no manpower. Like none. The Byzantines still have quite a bit, though. That would explain why the Byzantines are doing so well and pushing back in spots. It's because of manpower. The shortages are just are hurting the Saxons. Yeah, because the Byzantines have started to push again in the Caucasus. They've retaken south. They're south of Rostov. Not that I'm optimistic the Byzantines are actually going to win, but it's promising to say the least. They've managed to stabilize the Italian line a little bit. Although it looks like they're going to lose Taranto. Yeah, they're starting to get pushed back again in, in Italy. Not good. Ah, the Balkan line too. They've been cut off. So Greece itself is fully cut off now. And there's not many defenders in Greece, Greece. Which is a good thing. The defenders should be trying to defend Constantinople. Although a lot of them just got surrounded um, in here. There's no port, so if they can't break out, they're, they're all dead. That's a pretty deathly pocket, and the Saxons are now pushing into Greece. So that line's collapsing. The other caucus is starting to get pushed back again. They just lost Stravopol. Um, it looks like the Byzantines have pulled a lot of troops off that line. Um, probably in favor of defending Constantinople as it gets threatened. Or try to possibly break out. Save the troops that are in here. There's a good amount of the army sitting in um, southern Thrace here, surrounded. They've also pumped more men into Greece by the looks of it too, because there's like five troops in Greece, but now there's about 20. And they're fighting on the very toe of the boot of Italy now, about to retreat onto Sicily. They could stay in Messina and defend Sicily. I've seen, you know, like 10 troops defend that fairly easily. The Africa line here is starting to get pushed back pretty heavily. They're into Egypt now. Again, the Levant is starting to push in. However, they, the gains there are not as good as the other lines. <laughs> The Caucasus line has now reached Yerevan and is pushing into Turkey and Anatolia proper before the Levant could even touch Turkey, which is just sad. Uh, oh, that whole contingent's gone. Wow. They've got a huge army sitting outside of Constantinople, but then again, the Byzantines also have a huge army in Constantinople, so that'll be quite the fight when that does happen. Oh, they still got troops in Benghazi. In Africa, still fighting. Wow. Huh. Gotta give it to the Byzantines. Like I said, they're not going down without a fight. They will go down, though. They're definitely losing uh, pretty heavily at this point. I don't think they're going to make any major breakouts or pushbacks now. Oh, yeah, they've lost most of Anatolia. A good portion of their army is now surrounded. Um, near Vaughn. They've got nothing defending that line coming into Anatolia. Nothing at all. They're just sweeping it because their army's in Constantinople or has been wiped out. Or there's 95 units. There's a ton of divisions in Greece. They need to abandon Greece and defend Anatolia line, that, that line there. 
because otherwise it doesn't matter what's in Constantinople. It's just going to be wiped out. But they still got a ton of units in Greece for no reason at all. Athens isn't what you want to defend. Anatolia is what you want to defend. The hell are you doing? <laughs> I mean, they're successfully, as you can see, they're doing quite well. But they should be doing quite well elsewhere. It looks like they put troops on that line, but I think it's too little too late. I mean, they've got to be, like, one click from death at this point. Yeah, they basically are. Oh, Here's your alarm. <laughs> yeah, you can see, like, they're pushing into... They're ready to push into Constantinople. Fun. She's gotta go wash. She's dying her hair. She's gotta go wash it all right now. Freaking hope this looks good. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it'll look great. Just doing it like a pastel y color. Yeah, they've, they've managed to put up a defense, but again, too little too late, I think. I mean, they're about to smash into Izmit here. Oh, and they're attacking Constantinople. Thankfully without success, but they are doing it. They're still pushing into Greece, still pushing Greece out. They're fighting for Messina now. Although, like I said, they're not succeeding. I didn't think they would, at least right away. I can't believe how long they've managed to hold out, though. They've done really well. I think the dumbest thing they did was taking all those troops off the Caucasus line and throwing them into Greece when they should have abandoned Greece and defended and more defended that Caucasus and Levant. And then just threw a bunch of troops into Constantinople. That probably would have been the smartest thing to do. But unfortunately, they didn't do it. So what do you do? really they're holding on to what they have left though um, they're 96 percent towards capitulation so like losing Athens and um, the Peloponnese region and stuff is is going to be what does them in I'm pretty sure we'll see Athens could hold for a little bit but losing like Argos and Patras and stuff is just going to be probably enough. Because I think they can get around Athens, kind of. Oh no, they've got troops. Yeah, Athens is going to hold for a while. I would imagine. They've got a shit ton of troops in there. Oh, and there they go though. Somewhere else they lost whatever it was they lost and that was it. The Byzantines are gone. Now it's the Saxons versus the Tang. This is the final showdown. The two juggernauts of, uh, of industry here. How's Northumbria done? Holy balls, they have a shit ton of troops. So nobody's invading Northumbria, that's for sure. Uh, they also have radar, which makes no sense. Um, but wow. That's insane. They have a f so many troops. I love how Ireland has 11. Northumbria's sitting here with like, you know, three, four hundred troops. And uh, they just have 11. They're just, they're fine. Whatever. Dang. They're on war economy and everything. They haven't chosen any chiefs of staff, but I guess they don't have any because of the mod. Why do so many mods not have them? Like, why not just have the default ones? Just keep the default ones, you know what I mean? Like, why even bother removing them? Or does it just automatically happen? I'm just, I'm confused. I don't really know why they're always missing. I appreciate the mods that put in custom ones. I think that's a great idea, but... I don't know. Tang or Saxons? Which way do you think it's going to go? Leave a comment right now. Tang or Saxons? The initial part of the war seems to be Tang, but the Saxons army, keep in mind, are in this area, so they've only just probably gotten to the front now. Um, 
to really start to fight Tang, whereas Tang probably had most of their army on the front from the get-go. Uh, plus, what is that? Saxons just got elite forces, which I don't know what that's going to do, because they probably will just keep pumping out infantry like they have been. But you never know. <laughs> you never know. Um, but yeah, Tang or Saxons? Initial seems to be Tang, but uh, Saxons could very well come back and win this. Both are very uh, similar. Um, 101 million manpower for Tang, uh, but only 2.1 million for Saxons. So if Tang could hold out until they run out of manpower, they could easily overrun the Saxons. Uh, the Saxons' advantage here is their factories. They have 1,300, 617 are military, whereas Tang only has 371, and only 100, 182 of those are blacksmith. Um, and I saw they had 154 a second ago, so that means they either just built some, just took some over, or just repaired some. So it's hard to say, uh, really, how this is going to go. So, yeah could go either way honestly until there is a very clear push happening um that's debil debilitating enough of a push uh, it's really hard to say tang is also fighting in um egypt although i don't expect that fighting to last too too long so i don't think tang is going to be able to have enough troops to hold out especially if alexandria falls that's their only port um so yeah and it just did so tang's not going to keep cairo and Egypt for very long, and then those troops will go and be redistributed to the front. Uh, but right now the line's pretty much on the Ural Mountains in the north. Uh, it is a pretty deep cut into the plateaus of um, Middle Asia here, and then down into the Saxons' poor fighting area of uh, m mostly eastern Persia, starting to get into Pakistan, India area. Um, and the push right now is Tang, uh, but always can shift you really don't know what this uh, ta uh, Saxons could take most of the north and then push south whereas the tank could push even into the Levant um, and then still lose so you really just don't know until there's a clear push winner um, going on so we're gonna pause it though because this is going to be a big long war for sure uh, I mean, we're talking about two power heads over a thousand units each easy going against each other so it's going to be a long war regardless of who wins it but yeah leave you if you haven't left your comment leave your comment now saxons or the tang which one do you think is going to win and i'll be back when something really interesting happens they nuked them <clears throat> they they built a nuke and they nuked them what the fuck um yeah tang is is dead they're going to lose so yeah <laughs> I, I i just for the mercy... Oh, they're actually going to die before I even stop talking, so it's not even going to matter. Uh, they pushed back to the Urals for a while, and they held out fairly well, and then they just got pushed back pretty heavy in the central steppe, and they could just never recover. Um, there was some pretty heavy fighting in uh, Bangladesh for a while, but yeah, they just they got old pretty quickly. And there it is. That's it. The Saxons are the winners in 735. They own basically everything so good job also the mayans good job for just having two units doing nothing <laughs> oh my god okay well thanks for watching i'll see y'all eventually peace